This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guest is Pete Snow, and Pete is a professor emeritus from George Fox University in Newburgh. He's also a new, newcomer to the Art Harvest Studio Tour this year, which takes place the first two weekends in October in Yamhill County. So welcome, Pete. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Nice to meet you. And also, congratulations on being on the tour. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, so tell me, how did you happen to um, begin the art department at George Fox University? Well, back in the late 60s, Milo Ross, who was then president, uh, I had been teaching in public school teaching art, mm -hmm. and uh, he encouraged me to come to Fox and start an art department, which I wasn't real sure about, but then I finally decided that was a good thing. And so we moved to Newburgh, and uh, I started at Fox and uh, spent the next 22 years building the art department. That's so incredible. <laughs> That's really amazing. And now? And now the art department is the fifth largest major on campus. Isn't that incredible? I wow. joke and tell the guys there, when I retired, they had to hire five of you to take my well, place. See, there you go. <laughs> wow. And, and since retiring, what, what have you been doing? Is that when you, when you really... Your pottery took off, or were you doing pottery all those years as well? Oh, I was, I was doing pottery all the time I was okay. at Fox. Uh, one kind of interesting note is one year, Joan Austin <laughs> invited me to make mugs for ADAC. Mm -hmm. I made 650 mugs oh my that gosh. year. <laughs> you were about mugged out at Christmas, huh? <laughs> yes. It's like, I, know what, I don't want Santa to bring me this year. <laughs> okay, wow. Yes, and I, I've always enjoyed working in a variety of art forms. You know, I've done drawing and painting and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Reed College for a master's degree and learned calligraphy from Lloyd Reynolds. Oh, my goodness. And wow. have, uh, you know, done calligraphy for many years. I don't have any here to show, mm -hmm. but uh, have enjoyed art and teaching students art. That was, to me, that was a fun sort of thing because many of the students I had who came to George Fox, the school had probably gone to a very small public school somewhere, mm -hmm. maybe Sayo or you know some little mm -hmm. town somewhere. They had never had art before, and so I was introducing them for the first time. Oh yeah, and it was good. Oh. They the kids enjoyed it. They found uh, pleasure and reward in mm -hmm. making a variety of things. Sure, uh, many of them learned calligraphy, which was you know I enjoyed that. Uh, and it was, it was just a, a good time. The school was, of course, smaller than it is now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I still had a, a good interest in students uh, learning about art. At some point, yeah, you probably actually ran across them. It was everybody who went through there, didn't you? Yes. Well, it took me a while, but I finally encouraged the faculty and the administration to require the uh, introduction to art mm -hmm. uh, as a general ed requirement, mm -hmm. as was music. Uh, and so students got to, a chance to hear about sure. art as a, as a student, whether they'd learned about it before or not, they still got a chance to see pictures and to talk about it and even to, to do a little bit of art too. Oh, sure. Yeah. Now, I know that you brought some images with you today. So how about we flash them up on the screen okay. and you can, you can t t talk about those yeah. and then also talk about the work that you're you're doing currently mm -hmm. and where you're going to be showing too yes. for the tour. Here you go. Well, that's a little project. I like that. Those are called bells mm -hmm. and they're thrown on the potter's wheel very much like you'd throw a mug and then after they're leather hard then you pull a handle on them. Oh, okay. And then I they see. have a little clapper inside and so you just pick them up, pick them up and ring them. So what did you call it after they're leather hard? Yes, so leather hard is the stage that they're still soft enough that you can do things with them. Mm -hmm. They don't, they have to become greenware, which means they're dry and ready to be fired the first time mm -hmm. as bisqueware be, and become bisqueware and then can be glazed. Okay. Yeah, those, I had, I had a lot of fun making those. Oh, I love it. Just, I think those are great. You know, you could have one on your dinner table yeah, and ring sure. it. Time for dinner. Exactly. <laughs> right, you've been talking too long. Time to let somebody else have a turn. Yeah, right. right? The talking stick, the talking bell. Okay, that's, that's really beautiful. And I made lots and lots of big pots uh, for planting things in mm -hmm. uh, primarily. 
they're, they're fun to make and they're fairly large and that one has two handles on it and uh, is, you know, I don't know how big technically across it is. It's probably 12, 14 inches across. Pretty this good way. size, yeah. Yeah. And, and there for people to plant plants in and, you mm -hmm. know, have in their house or on their porch or wherever. And I made lots and lots of, well, there's a honey bowl honey there. Pot, uh, yeah. The other one, well. Sugar, I, creamer? Th yeah, there's a, a pitcher, I think a small pitcher in behind and mm -hmm. then uh, probably a sugar bowl mm -hmm. and then a honey pot. Those are pretty. Yeah, I made, you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of interesting sorts of things. Sure. And of course, they get glazed to various colors and glazing is always lots of fun to do because it sometimes turns out lots different than you anticipated mm -hmm. it turning out. <laughs> and there's a picture and the, the bowl that you see there with a handle on it, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether I've actually ever seen another potter make those, but I made them. And the nice thing about them is they work very well in the microwave because oh. you can put what you want in them, put it in the microwave, and when it's done, the bowl is hot, but the handle is not. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> and so yeah. you take it out and eat your soup or whatever oh, you put perfect. in there. <laughs> That's interesting. And, of course, a pitcher. Pitchers are always, you know, I made, I made big ones, I made small ones, mm -hmm. I, you know, made them for... The two-quart pitcher is about as big as a person can normally handle. Mm -hmm. You know, two quarts of liquid is... Heavy. Yeah. In ceramic. Yeah. Sure. And that's a that's basically a, a pot for flowers. Only it's big. It's two bowl shapes, which are joined together at the rim, and then a slab piece, which is uh, attached to the to the bottom of one piece, but the top, mm -hmm. of course, and the hole, of course, cut in. And so you could put a, a fairly large group of flowers in there with water in them, and they stay fresh and nice for a period of time. But it's kind of fun to make bigger pieces like that too and decorate them with sure. you know, interesting patterns and textures. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably a cookie jar, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, uh, it's been a while since I've made that one, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's a cookie jar, not for big cookies, but for smaller cookies. Dainty, yeah. dainty cookies, I like it. <laughs> yeah, there, there's our and back to the bells. Yeah, back to our bells again. Okay. <laughs> and then, and here we are. Hello. So now I see that you brought some, some things with you, and I'm really intrigued by this because this seems to be the, the sculptural piece that you brought. Yes. Yes, I, I taught a class in sculpture <clears throat> to students, and I always wanted them to make something that was kind of permanent. You could have them work in clay, but most students, if they had not had experience in clay, find clay to be, unless you've got a really good image in your mind, uh, it may not turn out like you want it in mm -hmm. clay. And of course it has to be bisque fired and perhaps glazed or at least glaze fired. So basically I went to what is called steatite or soapstone. And it's a soft stone, can be carved with small tools, files, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the piece that you get very often when you buy it is you know, kind of like that, only it's got sharper edges and that sort of thing. So, But kind of a... A, a blob of Right, a big rock. chunk. Okay. Yes. And with, with something like this, it can be turned and... Oh, see, I thought it was two pieces. Okay. Yeah, oh. You can turn it whichever oh, way you like, like it. it. So it doesn't actually have a bottom in the usual sense. Okay. And m many of them that I made were like that. I see. Okay. So you could turn around one way or the other. Open to interpretation. Yes. yes. And I, I, the kids enjoyed it because they could make a finished piece and it looked like, you know, a real piece of sculpture. <laughs> now, it's not this shiny. No, no. So the, how do you get it to be this okay. shiny? Once you have the shape done, then you begin to, to sand it with heavy, coarse sandpaper, getting finer and finer. And then right at the end, while well, you, you use a, a really fine, fine sandpaper and then you wax it and it becomes polished like that. So when you use the sandpaper, is it sand, sand by hand or sand with a machine? Well, no, sand by hand, generally okay. using water. Oh, I see, okay. So it's, it's like a, you know, a, paint, a painted piece you mm -hmm. might want to polish up. Oh. But it, and and it, uh, it's interesting because uh, on a short-term mission trip that my wife and I were on in Kenya, 
why we saw soapstone made, they called it Kisi stone in Kenya, and some of it's this color, some of it was darker. Uh, they made all kinds of beautiful animals and that sort of thing out of it. Have I seen some that's like sort of charcoal gray, almost black? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes, yes. I think I've seen that carved in, uh -huh. yeah, oh, interesting, okay. Yeah. Wow. This is a slab piece, in other words, the, the sides of it were f rolled out flat, uh, cut to fit, and put to joined together, pinched up, and then while it was still leather hard, drawn the, the, the shapes in it, because that oh, right. kind of shape is, shows up mm -hmm. in various forms on all three sides. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, of course, bisque and then decorated and glazed uh, as a kind of a tall vase. Oh, yeah, and, I like it. You know, that's kind of a fun sort of thing. Sure, to, absolutely. To, to do. And you've got a candle holder. Yes. Uh, this is a thrown tube. <laughs> Now, most people don't think about throwing tubes, but you can throw a tube. You start just like you'd start to throw a pot, and then except that in the middle, you don't make a bottom. You just bring it out, and then you make it into kind of a U-shape. This has a kind of a U-shape to it, and then you bring the top together, and it closes it up, oh. and the air then is trapped inside so it doesn't collapse. Oh, I see. Okay, interesting. And then this, this is a thrown foot on it, and then these are thrown little uh, candle holders, a little bit like the tube on the, the bowl that I was talking about, only mm -hmm. much smaller. And then the candles can be put in there and it makes a kind of oh, an interesting really? that's, candle holder. Yeah, that's really amazing. <laughs> I was wondering how you did that. Okay. Yes. And, and then, the, the, the blue and white piece is, oh, yeah. is really porcelain pretty. and really uh, it decorates kind of fun, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, because you can decorate the outside by putting all kinds of little texture surfaces and that sort of thing mm -hmm. too. And of course, teapots are always one of those things that people Everybody like Everybody loves to have teapots. teapots. Yes. There, there are teapots and there are teapots. You can make big ones or you can make little ones. Mm -hmm. and, but they're, they're always fun to make. The critical factor with teapots is making sure the lid fits. Right. <laughs> and that when you pour it, it doesn't run back. <laughs> exactly. And is there some sort of magic proportion to do that? So well, the lid of course has to fit. Right. But the teapot, when you make the spout, mm -hmm. has to have just a sort of a sharp edge around the, the, the spout here so that when you quit pouring, the water it it. goes down or goes down. Mm -hmm. doesn't dribble down the side of the mm -hmm. pot. <laughs> right, exactly. That's amazing. So now let's go back to the, to the studio tour because we're almost out of time. Okay. So you'll be showing in Newburgh. Yes. And... People can find you on the Art Harvest Studio yes. Tour .org uh -huh. website mm -hmm. with a link back. Do you have a website yourself? I don't. Okay, but they can find a link to yes. your contact information and to all the directions for where right. you'll be yes. and, and all of that. Okay. I'll, I'll be showing with my son in law, Wesley. Wes Cropper, right. Wes Cropper. And uh, we will be, he has a good place for me to show my pots. Perfect. Uh, I mean, my studio is fairly typical pottery studio, which is not, right. <laughs> it's not the grand place. It's the place where you work. Exactly. It's a shop. <laughs> well, Pete, I really want to thank you for being here today. This has been wonderful to meet you, obviously, uh -huh. and to see your work. And I wish you all the success on the tour. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope for it. <laughs>